I'm Josh, and this is my co-host, Amelia, and you are here with us today in Time Travelers. Time Travelers is the place where we hang out, have some fun, and learn about God, too. Amelia, would you care to reveal this series' big idea? My pleasure. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Now, just the people who have ever called a wisdom hotline, say it with me. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. You do know there is no such thing as a wisdom hotline. Ha ha ha, au contraire, mon frère. What? You've actually called one? Nope. I started one. Let me just put this on speaker. Welcome to the Wisdom Hotline, where we're never going to give you up, never going to let you down. How may I help? Oh, my neighbor's barky little dog uh, keeps leaving doggy donuts on my lawn, and I just don't know what to do. Well, you've come to the right place. You just scoop up those little pooch pops up with a shovel, and then you fling them all over your neighbor's front porch. Oh, are, you, are you sure about that? Absolutely. Problem solved. You know, I'm never going to make you cry, but I am going to say goodbye. Amelia, that was awful advice. What? No way! I got this friend Bugsy, and that's what she always does. Though sometimes she just takes the doggy muffins and puts them in people's mailboxes. You cannot tell people to do things like that. The people have spoken, Josh. They want a wisdom hotline. Oh. Welcome to the wisdom hotline, where we're never going to run around and desert you. How may I help? So, like, my dad let me drive his car, and I accidentally backed into a telephone pole and put a dent in his fender. What do I do? Simple. You call your dad and pretend to be some lady who is 99 years old, and you say, I'm sorry, sir, but I ran into your car when I was racing my wheelchair. It was not your daughter's fault at all. No, sir. Is my dad going to believe that? Of course. Once you hit 90, you can get away with anything. You know, I'm never going to tell a lie and hurt you. This is ridiculous. You're just making everything worse. No, my friend Bugsy says that she tried it before and it worked. Do not answer that. Welcome to the Wisdom Hotline, where we're never going to give you up, never going to let you down. This, like, girl at school, like, dared me to eat this super hot, lip-flaming chili ghost pepper. Should I, like, do it? Well, as my friend Bugsy always says... Do not do it! Hey! I said I'd never let her down. Trust me, you didn't. Bugsy would not be pleased. Maybe you shouldn't hang around with this Bugsy anymore. Hmm? Maybe. Especially after the tangerine incident. The tangerine incident? You don't want to know. Maybe try hanging out with someone a little wiser. Oh, oh, I know just no, I know just who. You do? Haley! That's actually not a bad idea. Check this out. Good day, everyone. I am Haley, and I was just thinking, if I were going to go on a treasure hunting adventure, who would be the best person to take along with me? Hmm, this is gonna take some wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. You know who knows a thing or two about hunting for treasure? Pirates! Arr! Pirates have been hunting for treasure for generations. She'd make the perfect person to bring on my adventure. Arr! I'll find your treasure for ye. X marks the spot. Then again, the only reason pirates bury treasure in the first place is because they stole it from someone else. I'm not sure they can be trusted. Sure we can. A pirate's word is her bond. That's the code of the sea. Arr. Well, hmm, when you put it that way, hey, wasn't your eye patch on your right eye? Oh, uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh. Now, uh, I'm about the treasure. Hmm, I wonder if I should take my Aunt Jeannie on my adventure. Oh, how nice of you to think of me for your little trip. Bless your heart. Oh, I don't know. She may be a little old for treasure hunting. But then again, she was an investigative journalist for Archaeological Digest magazine for 40 years. 42 years, dear. Ooh, 
You know a thing or two about hunting for treasure, don't you, Aunt Jeannie? I've been around, that's for sure. Well, it seems like a no-brainer. It's obvious who I should take on the treasure hunt. It's Arr! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Was a hard decision, I'm sure, but I'm the star that you've been searching for. In today's story, we'll hear about a king who had a hard decision to make. Follow the advice of his friends or people who are older and wiser. <laughs> it's fun to talk that way. <laughs> I imagine doing it for our whole adventure. Nope. <laughs> I'll see you soon. The Bible, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 10. For over 40 years, King Solomon ruled over Israel. During that time, he did some pretty amazing things, like building a breathtaking temple for the Lord in a beautiful palace for himself. He received visitors from all over the world. He shared with others the wisdom God had given him. Much of this wisdom can be found in the book of Proverbs, including this advice on how to gain wisdom. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Unfortunately, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, did not pay attention to his father's words. He believed his way was best. And when Solomon died, Rehoboam became king of Israel. All hail, All hail King, king Rehoboam! Wow, check me out! Golden crown, spiffy palace, this is the life. Though the kingdom was strong under Solomon, he made the people work extremely hard. Now the Israelites wanted to see how this new king would treat them. Led by a man named Jeroboam, they came to see the king. Hey, you stole my name. It's Jeroboam, not Rehoboam. <laughs> Whatevs, Jer. Now what do you want? Your father made us work very hard. Let us take more breaks and we'll serve you well. Sounds like you want to slack off. We just need a little more vacay time. Then we'll be ready to give it all we got. Uh, well, come back in three days, Jer. Jeroboam and the Israelites left. Rehoboam paced the floor, trying to come up with a good answer. Yeah, no, maybe. Many times when Solomon needed wisdom, he asked God for it. Rehoboam didn't bother to talk to God, but he did at least talk to his father's wise advisors. The people want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Be kind to them. Absolutely, give them what they're asking for. You'll win their loyalty that way. Then they will serve you well. Huh. Instead of taking the advice of these wise men, Rehoboam decided to ask his buddies, the guys he had grown up with. He found them eating honey cakes and debating racing chariots. Gotta go with gold rims is what I say. Nah, gold is all show. You have to add some diamonds for traction. Hey, guys. Yo. What is up, my man? People want me to give them a break so they don't have to work so hard. What do you say? Oh, this is good. You get to do the real king stuff now. You got to show them who's boss. <laughs> they think your dad was tough? Tell them my pinky finger's stronger than my daddy's legs. Yeah, yeah, and, and my dad gave you a heavy load, but you haven't seen nothing yet. I am going to lay it on you. <laughs> Rehoboam frowned. He thought hard for two whole seconds. Whoa, you guys are good. I'm totally doing that. After three days, Jeroboam and the Israelites with him returned. Hey. Jer! Your Majesty, will you lighten the heavy workload your father gave us? <laughs> my pinky finger is stronger than my father's legs. My father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I'll make it even heavier. My father punished stragglers. I'll double it up. Rehoboam finished with a flourish. He waited for people to tremble and bow low. Are you kidding me? Jeroboam turned to the Israelites. 
We don't want anything to do with this Joker or the rest of David's family. Let's go back to our homes and start our own kingdom. Yeah! Hey, hey, wait! No, no, you can't do that. I'm in charge. Yeah, you're in charge of yourself. Good luck with that. Jeroboam and the men with him marched out and returned to their homes. From that day, the nation was split into two kingdoms. Rehoboam still ruled in Judah, but Jeroboam was made king of Israel. Totally not my fault. Rehoboam failed to listen to his father's own words. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. Rehoboam's foolishness nearly cost him all of the kingdom. King Rehoboam made the wrong choice. He should have remembered what his father, King Solomon, wrote. Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. That means if you want to become wise, you should find someone who's wiser than you to spend time with. Jesus' disciples spent three years hanging out with him, listening to him teach, watching the wise way he lived. We should find someone to learn from too. Maybe someone older and wiser. Oh, thank you, dear. Because when you surround yourself with foolish people, Arr! you'll end up doing something foolish. Arr! You surround yourself with people who say mean things about others, you're going to say mean things about others. With angry people, you'll be angry. With people who break the rules, yep, you know what's gonna happen. But hey, you've been around, right? You know the difference between someone who makes wise decisions and someone who doesn't. So pick your friends carefully and find someone older and wiser to be your mentor, someone you can learn from. Here's the one thing to remember today. Hang out with wise people. Ask God to help you find the wise people in your life. He wants you to have wisdom, remember, and he can use other people to help show you the way. So, what do you say, Aunt Jeannie? You wanna go on an adventure with me? Haley, my dear. I was made for adventure. Well, all right. <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye from me too. Wow. If Rehoboam had followed that advice, I think things would have gone very differently for him. It's not always easy to listen to wise advice from other people, especially when it's not something we want to hear. But if we surround ourselves with wise people, then we know we can trust their advice to be solid and true. God can give us wisdom through them. That's why it's important to remember to hang out with wise people. Remember, Jesus had a whole group of close friends, the disciples. The disciples spent time hanging out with Jesus, listening to him teach, watching him heal people, learning the right and wrong thing to do, and seeing his relationship with his father. The disciples learned from Jesus, and in the same way, we can learn from people who follow Jesus. So that means we need to choose our friends carefully, right? Yes, it is important to think about who we spend most of our time with. Oh, I know, why don't we ask God to put wise people in our lives who will follow him? Great idea! Would you pray for us, Amelia? I would be honored. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, thank you for the story that reminds us to hang out with wise people. Please help us spend time with friends who will help us make wise choices instead of leading us in the wrong direction. Help us learn from Rehoboam's mistake. Give us the wisdom to listen to people who love you and want to live your way. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we've seen today, both wisdom and foolishness are contagious. If you choose to hang out with people who like to slack off, who make fun of others, or who don't listen to their parents, well, you may find yourself doing the same. But if you spend time with other kids or wise adults who treat others with kindness and make good choices, you'll find it much easier to know and do the right thing. Oh, maybe I should bring Bugsy to Time Traveler so she can hang out with all the cool people here. That's actually not a terrible idea. Hello? It's for you. Me? Who's calling me on your phone? Someone very wise. Hello? 
Is my refrigerator running? Of course it is. Then you need to catch it! <laughs> that is good advice, isn't it? No. I actually have some better advice for our friends at home. Wait, no more advice! No. Join us next week as we kick off our new series, Made, both on our Ridgely Road campus and here online. You won't want to miss it. That actually is good advice. We'll see you next time in Time, time Travelers! Travelers.